you know, the FDOD budget was so bloated because we had these trillion dollar aircraft, the F-35, for example. You know, uh, did everybody see that 60 minutes expose from, uh, from uh, the F-35 back then? Yeah. Even though it works for Lockheed. Yeah, okay. they're, still, they're still funding it. Well, I was gonna say is, uh, you know, I worked on the F-35 uh, in my joint project on the Comanche helicopter back in 1995. And unfortunately, here we are in 2016, the aircraft is just now finally getting, uh, getting deployed. Now, the Chinese have already stolen the plans and had a flying airman before we are even able to get our own out. That's true. You can look it up and see the aircraft is flying out there already. You know, we, we, we are out there trying to defend a, you know, a, a trillion dollar life cycle project when the A-10 is one of the greatest workforce uh, aircraft that uh, the Air Force has ever seen. So, you know, it's one of the aircraft I would love to fly one of the days pilot, but, uh, but that's we can go there. Um, you know, I think that uh, the, other, the other big issues for me around the gun violence, as I say, I'm a, uh, uh, I'm a gun owner and I believe in the Second Amendment. However, I, I firmly believe in uh, mandatory safety training. In the military, we learn to, to be able to, to you know, uh, clean and, and dress and you know, store our weapons properly. And so I think that, uh, that responsible gun ownership is paramount. Um, you'll see that our current Congressman Ryan Costello, he's on record as saying, well, if anybody ever puts legislation out there, that he would vote for it. So he kind of says he's, he's for gun control. In my view, as a leader, we sponsor stuff. We're the champions of the idea. So, you know, as a congressman, how we want to be sponsoring uh, legislation to try to have, you know, the simple thing, the, the common sense things, you know, mandatory safety training, you know, closing the gun show loopholes, um, mandatory background checks, and, and reinstating the assault weapons ban back from the uh, from the 90s. I mean, that to me just seems common sense. Unfortunately, the NRA, were back in the 70s, they were they used to provide great training for stuff. And the, but then you keep you keep recording. It's okay. So don't, don't turn it off. But uh, you have a problem with it? No, not at all. Okay. So uh, the uh, the NRA, uh, you know, back in the 70s, did a great time, uh, um, you know, doing doing training for kids in the rod and gun shows. And now they, they basically hijack the system. And uh, congressmen like you know, Ryan or uh, Ryan Costello and others that are, that are beholden to the NRA and too too afraid to take on the establishment, and too afraid to, to challenge the NRA lobby. So I'm not one of those. Uh, I'm not there for career. I'm not there for my next election. I'm there for us here and now today. So I've had two great jobs, you know, both in the military and also as a business owner. Um, challenge of, you know, and, and successes on both sides. But it's, it's my learning experience, it's my educational background, and it's, it's my leadership ability that's brought me to this point to be able to, to continue what I learned at West Point to be a leader of character for a lifetime of self service to our nation. So with that, I'll open up to questions. Yes, sir. You, you I'm going to answer what you just said. You talked about uh, firearms where Explain, it's, you're, you're taking away the right to bear arms mm -hmm. and replacing it with the privilege like driving where you want a mandatory oh, testing? Not at all. Oh, no, that's, what you just, that's what you just said. No, no, what I'm saying, nobody wants to take away anybody's weapons. What I'm saying is people ought to be properly trained when they own a weapon. So if, they're not, if they cannot pass the training, do they lose the right to fire firearms? Do you think they deserve it they can't pass the training? I think there's still a right there. <laughs> okay, well, we agree to disagree on that. To me, it seems like it's common sense that... Uh, you know, so you're taking away someone's right if they can't pass training. Don't put words in my mouth. Uh, no, that's right. what you just said, though. No, I, I say that people should be properly trained to understand the safety. And what if they cannot be properly trained? Do they lose the right? Are you a gun owner? Yes, I am. So are you, have you been properly trained? There's what's properly trained. Do you know how to properly store your weapon? I believe I do. Probably loaded. I, I believe I do. I believe I do. Okay, so then what about that? I, I, we can get an but what I'm not, not arguing. I want to know what you stand. What is proper training so they can keep the right to bear arms? I'll defer that to the NRA. Let them run the training. How about that? Whatever they're comfortable with. Are you a member of the NRA? Used to be. Okay. Yeah. Not anymore because I don't believe in their religious attitudes. So, what other questions? That was a great school. We were consciously optimistic. So, uh, <laughs> You know, uh, there's, you know, without giving it too much with our, with our friends here, is, uh, you know, we, we think we have a really good shot. And uh, obviously, the, uh, you know, one, of the, one of the big differences is, is the, the ability to raise money, obviously. And, and uh, you know, Ryan's got much more money than we have. He's out there um, with over a million dollars in the bank, over the children, 80% of the special interest money. I've got maybe 10%. Costello. Yeah. Right. Who's, who's money? Special interest money, like, uh, like the PACs and, and, uh, and, 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 and the other so, you know, so, that's, so that's, that's probably our biggest gap. But as we learn, once we get our, uh, you know, our message out, once we realize that you know, if you put my background as a veteran and a business owner up against the, you know, Ryan's four jobs in his life that all been in, as an elected official, uh, that makes a big difference. And out of the fact that, uh, that Ryan 
Trump supporter. No. And I, I, I'm on record for not being a Trump supporter. Um, but uh, that makes a big difference, especially in Central County. So, with your help, in 20, 20 days and about uh, 11 hours before we got the polls open, uh, I look forward to being your, uh, your congressman elect. So. so, how does the race look for the House? So I just say it's 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 going to be it's really dependent on turnout. It's going to be really for us. We, we think that we have a very very good shot. So especially now, just looking at how everything's aligned with Trump at the top of the ticket and, and you know how Pennsylvania is turning. There's this really good articles, especially about Chester County and Philly going other places. But it's going to ground zero. So the sixth district is right in. You know, as I mentioned earlier, the the establishment folks rate the rate the ability of a, of a, a candidate on how well they raise money. And, you know, obviously we're, we're raising money, but as a business owner, you know, I, I believe we're raising money we need it, not, uh, not being open to it, especially in other places. So. You keep on pointing at me for special interest. What yeah. are you? So what's your other question? My other question is, you said you wanted to be bipartisan. What about for the Speaker of the House? Are you going to, if there's a, the Democratic majority, are you going to pick Nancy Pelosi, or do you have anyone else in mind? Sure, Cindy Horton. Okay. Ahead. And why do you prefer him over Nancy Pelosi? I know him. I, I talk to him, work with him. He seems like a reasonable guy. Okay. And what if the, what if you don't have a majority? What about for like major, minority leader it would be? Well, we'll cross that bridge. We'll see who, who actually is, is um, potential candidate. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Mike. Um, I just wanted to say, so I don't know if it's a little of your introduction. Okay, so, you know, I've been in the since February. February. Oh, but, continue to support Yes. No, I was with GE before. I always wanted to go to GE Aerospace, but you know, Lockheed acquired it. So. Okay, so yeah. you were. So I started at GE Information Services in DC. So I left the Active Duty Army when I was stationed in the Pentagon as a major major and went to work with GE Information Services right on the Y2K stuff. Okay. And then I got my name known and I got, got with GE Capital. Um, that was oh. And then I got my name further known and I got to, got to work with the Vice Chairman of the uh, General Control. Um, you know, sidebar or stories, he sent me a Wharton, so I got an interview with Wharton. And I, had, the, had that entrepreneurial bug, and I told my vice, my boss then, the vice chairman, he said, hey, you know, Bill, I want to go do deals, and you're not a deal guy, you're not there. I had a good little water business down in Philadelphia to work on. I said, water, it's called Best Airborne. So I came down as the um, immigration officer for that. That's, that was my role when I moved down here. So, but I enjoyed working kind of back there. So. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Mike. Um, I just wanted to say, so I know you've been in the Pentagon since February, but I just wanted to say, and you learn, you learn process in Six Sigma, and I will tell you that the, 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 the process of campaigning and being a candidate is probably one of Dysfunctional, disorganized. <laughs> it's 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 ridiculous. So it's, it's, uh, it's horrible. So you know, it is not is not very well in the process oriented. Yes, sir. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, <coughs> a a uh, suggestion for uh, lessening the divisiveness is to have a general. I'd like to comment on this. In general election, all the candidates run no party preference. If one of the candidates gets 51%, he's elected. And if there isn't, then there's a runoff between the top two or three candidates. Uh, and I think that's been implemented in some states. Yes. Yeah, I think they call it guerrilla primaries. So they, it's, it's but it eliminates the primary. Yeah, exactly. So and anybody they, can run, and then the top two get to run. The, the theory the is that it eliminates the uh, minority control of both parties. <coughs> Do you have an opinion on that? Would you care to share that? Um, you know, that's that's one is I'm learning the process. I mean, I think there's advantages and disadvantages for both. I do believe that, that there's a risk to, to the process being hijacked, both methods, you know, people registering for a certain party versus not allowing independents to vote at the primary, because if you're giving two candidates and giving this support. On the other side, um, you know, the risk is that, that you know, people kind of you know, gang up or anybody can do anything that dilutes it. I think there's a science around it. And you know, for the for our staff guys back there, they know it better than me. But fundamentally, I'm, I'm all for everybody. You know, everybody's vote counts, and everybody has an equal chance. Mm -hmm. um, I think California is probably the best for the, the real primary. You know, they're doing a lot there. So. The, the idea being that it will appeal more to the middle of the road voter who tends not to show up. Correct. The disenfranchised or the disappointed. I mean, as I used to say, is I was never really super involved in politics other than donating and you know, participating and voting. I was voting, but I never really thought about the ramifications. And this year, you know, obviously, 
couple years ago, you know, when I got involved with in politics, I'm you know, become very, very involved. But this year is an extremely critical race for the, as I say, not just the, you know, uh, for us as Americans, but I think the idea of America is at risk. Uh, that well, 30% of people identify themselves as independents. Number of identify themselves as independents of either party has declined dramatically over the last three Sure, years. yeah. And you're right. Independence in the state of Pennsylvania are essentially disenfranchised. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah, because they can't vote. Right. In the front. They can vote on some general. So I mean, they're, they're left with the, you know, not necessarily their favorite candidate. And you know, I don't know what the right answer is to that. You know, but I do know that that, uh, and, and a lot of you know that. You know, I, I, I personally, my view is that, you know, at the end of the day, I look at the Democrat and Republican like we look at the Protestant and Catholics. We're all Americans first, and that's. And that, that helps, and that'll be my attitude in Washington. So that's going to help try to break this uh, dichotomy of, of the polarizing attitudes. So we have to we have to be able to work across the aisle. And you don't think that that sort of thing would work the best way? Oh no, I didn't say it would. I just don't know enough about it. So I think that you know, I, think if you're, I don't know if you guys want to add any commentary about the thoughts on the I never heard. I mean, there's sort of a, there's sort of an implicit comment if you're going to call it a real primer. I think that's what they. Yeah. I don't know. Is that the official term? Well, I'll put it. I'll put it this way. I know California has it, and you could actually have Democrat versus Democrat in the fall. I think, I think they have that. I think Mike Connors. I think Mike Connors running against uh, Andrew Connors, who I believe is a Democrat. Also, one of the Southern states has it. Louisiana. 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 Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of the survival of the fittest, if you will. So, yeah. so. Uh, but that's determined at the state level. Yeah, I, I believe it is. Right. Yeah. I mean, the federal level, we could. Seems to me, as a, as a veteran, 